MCAT 2017 Cram Critical Analysis and Reasoning Skills Passage 25 Designing Courthouses As you view the reading of the passage, you'll notice some highlighted snippets of text. What I want you to do is garner meaning from these specific selections in order to answer the foundations of comprehension, reasoning beyond the text, and reasoning within the text questions that follow. Good luck and happy reading. Paragraph 1. In a recent study, psychologists and mass investigated the effects of course, courthouse architecture on the psychological well-being and cognitive processes of potential users. Specifically, she compared two courthouses located in Padova, Italy, the old courthouse located in a former convent originally built in 1345 and the new courthouse built in 1991 and designed by Gino Valle, an internationally known architect. Although serving or having served the same purpose, the two buildings have completely different styles. One is an old building with a rather residential look warm colors, large windows, and a large wooden door. The other, a massive gray semicircular building with narrow windows and an entrance enclosed by two huge walls. Paragraph two. When study participants were asked to imagine themselves accompanying a friend to the courthouse, they reported greater discomfort and stress when anticipating a trial in the modern building. However, contrary to predictions, this was true only when they were already familiar with the two buildings. It is possible that photographs reduce the actual impact of the architectural design, although this would contradict prior research by architect Gavin Stamp, showing that distortions due to photographic presentation have negligible effects on preference. Another possibility for participants' greater discomfort when imagining going to the new courthouse is that those with prior experience may have been exposed to the building from multiple angles, whereas unfamiliar participants receive information only about the building's facade. Paragraph 3. It is important to note that participants did not generally dislike the new building. From the standpoint of general aesthetic distinctions, such as beauty versus ugliness, no differences emerged between the two buildings. If anything, the new building was seen by the participants as slightly more attractive. The data suggests that participants responded more to the intimidating nature of the building than to its beauty. Paragraph 4 The most important result of Mass's research is that courthouse architecture was found to affect the estimated likelihood of conviction. Participants were more pessimistic about the trial outcome when they imagined entering the new building than when um, they imagined entering the old one. This occurred regardless of whether participants had prior familiar familiarity with the respective buildings. It remains unclear exactly which architectural features are responsible for the observed shift in likelihood of conviction estimates. The modern building differs on so many dimensions, size, color, shape, building materials, age, and so on, from the old building that it is impossible to isolate their individual impact. Also, it may be the interaction of features that creates the overall impression of the building as intimidating. Paragraph 5. How exactly do architectural features affect social cognitive processes such as high likelihood estimates? 
One possibility is that design features affect the emotional well-being or mood of the user, which, in turn, biases his or her thought processes. For example, the architectural characteristics of a new courthouse seem to have made hypothetical users feel anxious and tense, and a bad mood has been shown to induce negative thoughts and expectations. However, building type affected perceived likelihood of conviction also for those participants who showed no enhanced discomfort in reaction to the new building. Paragraph 6. Another and more plausible possibility is that the design features of the new courthouse activated specific thoughts and mental associations related to conviction. For example, some participants spontaneously commented that the new building has greater resemblance to a prison than to a courthouse. Others mentioned that the two high walls enclosing the entrance give the impression that those who enter the building are already convicted. All right. According to Mass, people's reaction to the two buildings were independent of A, whether or not they considered the buildings to be attractive, B, what they knew of the history of the buildings, C, the relative size of the buildings, or D, the influence of their pairs. I'll give you a moment to think and go back to review the passage. You may need to in order to answer this question. All right, so this is a foundations of comprehension question, um, which wants you to recall specific parts of the passage, such as examples offered. And in the second sentence of the third paragraph, Mass writes, quote, from the standpoint of general aesthetic distinctions such as beauty versus ugliness, no differences emerge between the two buildings. If anything, the new building was seen by the participants as slightly more attractive. The data suggests that participants responded more to the intimidating nature of the building than to its beauty, okay? So the reaction um, that the individuals were having was not based upon their assessment of the building's beauty. In other words, it was independent of this variable. So the correct answer choice is answer choice A. The passage states that people, quote, um, reported greater discomfort and stress when anticipating a trial in the modern building when they were already familiar with the two buildings. This suggests that um, knowing the history of the buildings could be influencing. So this is wrong, obviously. And no argument is made that the knowledge of the history of the buildings did not influence the reactions, okay? The passage indicates that people's reaction to the building is unlikely to have been independent of size. In fact, it might have contributed to the reaction by creating, quote, the overall impression of the building as intimidating. And last, there is limited um, information in the passage about peer influence. People were asked to imagine themselves accompanying a friend to the courthouse, but based on the passage, it's unclear if people's reactions were dependent or independent of their pairs, okay? So we can't make any assumptions regarding this. All right. Which of the following examples is most consistent with Mass's suggestion that the architectural design features can affect perception by activating specific thoughts and mental associations? This is in the final paragraph. Is it A, a popular bank has decor, colors, and accents suggestive of gold? Is it B, an unpopular car wash does not have a drive through design? Or is it C, an unpopular um, grocery store has bad produce? Ew. 
I'll give you a moment to think. Okay, so in this reasoning beyond the text question, you have to apply the ideas um, in this excerpt from the passage to the new situations presented in the answer traces. So you have to understand the assumptions underlying the article and assess how the new information shifts the central thesis. The suggestion that design features can activate specific thoughts relevant um, to the building's purpose without directly impacting the functionality of the building is best supported by the example of a bank that has gold decor, okay? So it's going to be um, answer choice A. So gold decor, colors and accents that suggest financial stability and wealth. This decor, although not directly affecting the use of the building for banking, primes thoughts and mental associations related to the primary purpose of a bank, uh, which then could affect its perception and popularity, okay? The lack of several um, important design features uh, that a user uh, could that could affect the user's experience, such as the lack of a drive-through design for car washes, you know, um, that's going to be impacting. And bad produce is not an architectural design feature, so this is just not, yeah, not, it's just not fitting here, okay? All right. In the passage, the author justifies rejecting the emotional mood as media explanation with which of these reasons? A. Emotions do not influence our expectations as much as we think they do. B. Participants without negative emotions were affected in the same way as those with negative emotions. C. The study did not measure and compare the participants moods before and after their imagined entry into the courthouse. So which one is it? I'll give you a moment to go back and review the passage. All right. Okay, so in this last question, it's going to be, um, reasoning within the text type, and you basically have to recall the evidence the author uses to support this key argument, okay? In the last sentence of the fifth paragraph, the author notes that, quote, building type affected perceived likelihood of conviction also for those participants who showed no enhanced um, discomfort in reaction to the new building. In other words, the findings were similar for individuals with and without negative emotions. Okay, so basically the answer choice is going to be B, the correct answer choice that is. There's no information in the passage to support the idea that we believe that emotions do not influence our expectations nearly as much as we think they do. So this question is really trying it, but it's wrong, okay? And as for answer choice C, which is now partially um, cut, um, participants, the author does not discuss the absence of data about participants' mood before and after they imagine entering the courthouse, okay? So that's wrong as well. And that's it. This wasn't so bad.